This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you in part through a grant from the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Please be seated. I'm Tom Curtin with Oldbrook Steel, and on behalf of the Oldbrook family and all of our Oldbrook employees, we uh, thank you for attending this legislative candidate forum. Oldbrook is proud to host this event, and we are delighted that you are here to engage in this meaningful exchange this morning. Before I turn it over to our event sponsor, Chris Porter from Porter Financial Strategies, just a couple of housekeeping items. We'd ask you to silence your cell phones and uh, bathrooms are across the hall. So without further ado, Chris, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Oh, thank you very thank much. Thank you for Short being our sponsor this morning. Thank you. Okay, well I'll try and be as brief, I guess. Uh, I guess the only thing from a sponsor standpoint is I wanna thank everybody for being here, okay? Cause it's easy to voice an opinion, but to actually participate is even better. So thank you very much for being here. Um, I, I'm actually here, and I, it's going to sound a little corny, I think, but I'm a little bit humbled because, number one, partnering up with somebody like Albrick and Tom and all of that, um, I, I put the Albricks at the high, in the highest esteem. Fred Albrick was a good friend of mine, and Chris is becoming one. So thank you to the Albrichs. Uh, secondly, I'd like to thank the Chamber for putting their faith in me. Okay, I hope to do a good job. Uh, I am not asking to be rated, however. Uh, okay, <laughs> but I'm sure I will be. Um, last but not least, I'd like to thank our candidates. And I really truly mean this because all of us will have at times, I'm sure, expressed an opinion, but it's the two of you that are putting yourselves on the front lines. And I think you're to be commended. So I thank you so much for being here and doing what you do. Okay. So with that, I think I'll just segue into a couple things. As you see, we have a section where there are going to be uh, predetermined questions, and then we're going to open it up to the audience to ask questions. Um, this is a forum, not a debate. And I'm going to ask if you do ask questions, fantastic. But I'm going to ask that they not be a, a personal conversation between you and whomever is answering, and that it not be necessarily contentious or something. We want to get information, not watch it, not watch a, a separate debate. Fair enough. Okay. Okay. All right. We'd like to say thank you to Tony, and he's going to say a couple words, and then we'll Just, get going. We're going to give it right back to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. It's so important that you hear, hear the, uh, the, the candidates and uh, what their positions are, the issues that are facing the town of North Haven. Uh, so thank you uh, for just being present. Uh, it's very important that we're, we've got some press here this morning. I want to thank NHTV, the Record Journal, for being here. Uh, because we'll get some coverage and that is always positive. That's always a good thing. Uh, special thanks to Ulbrich Steele, Tom, Chris, uh, Chris is not here, but Tom, thank you so much. These guys always step up. They don't have to, uh, but they do. They're really great community leaders and partners. So thanks very much, Tom. Also, uh, I want to thank Chris. Oh, excuse me. Uh, <coughs> yeah, another Chris. He's on vacation. <laughs> well, I'll thank this Chris. I'll thank this Chris. Uh, Chris, thank you very much, not only for being a sponsor this morning, but for stepping up uh, to take uh, the helm of our Government Affairs uh, Committee and being the moderator this morning. It's, it's another very, very important thing that we do, advocating for business in Hartford and D.C. Uh, there's nothing more critical. Uh, the, you know, the condition of the state uh, is something we all worry about. And uh, sometimes uh, we have disagreements on what is the best way to make things better. Uh, my suggestion is they should just follow what North Haven does and they'd be fine. So let me turn it right back over to Chris and thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay, so as you see in your agenda, we're going to start with two opening remarks. We give you two minutes for each. We did a coin toss and I believe, Mike, did you opt to go first? So. <coughs> You're on. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chris. 
And it's a great delight to be here. You know, it seems like yesterday, six years ago, 2009, when I first came on the scene here in North Haven, I had the opportunity to participate in my first candidates forum. And there was a very stately individual, a wonderful gentleman who was asking me questions. Little did I know then, that was the start of a wonderful relationship I had with the late Fred Ulbrich. And I miss him dearly today. Fred, we think about you, and to rest in peace. You're a wonderful man. So North Haven today, I believe that North Haven is on the right track for continued success. We've had a lot of successes over the past six years. From a financial standpoint, the town has achieved triple A rated status. This is very significant. It's the gold standard for municipalities. Not many municipalities are triple A rated. What that means for our tax paying citizens is anytime the town goes out to bond for infrastructure improvement projects, the town is borrowing at the lowest possible interest rates. As an example with our middle school that we're building and renovating, the town will save millions of dollars over the course of that bonding note because of its financial status. From an economic development standpoint, all over town, and we'll be talking about this on Thursday on our economic development breakfast, there's development all over. On Universal Drive, the emergence of Dick Sporting Goods, of the Cinemark Theater. We're working with Cinemark to put four pads in the front of that particular theater there. Universal Drive has seen the advent of Comcast, the Xfinity store coming in. There's many, many economic development projects that are coming forward. On Washington Avenue, very shortly you'll see the emergence of a 50,000 square foot retail plaza where Munson Motors was. North Haven also is one of the few communities in this region that brought in manufacturing over the course of the last 18 months with uh, the C. Coles company at the old Marlin site. It's a little known fact that at that site, we brought in a Massachusetts ma a manufacturing company that's come in. Carlin Combustion is now integrated into McKenna Drive. So we have seen unprecedented success here in North Haven as far as the grand list uh, continuing will continue to grow. And there's many more economic development projects that are in the pipeline. I'll be more than happy to answer questions. I don't want to take more than the two minutes here and allow Mr. Ramonti to come up and give his opening statement. Thank you very much. I work with many of you. I enjoy it greatly, and I look forward to continuing to work with you to achieve unprecedented success here in North Haven. Thank you. Thank you. First, I'd like to thank Ulrich Steele and the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce and Chris Porter for hosting this morning's um, event. I would also like to thank NHTV for taping this event for the residents of North Haven to watch on NHTV at home. For those of you that don't know me, I'm John Bamonte and I'm a lifelong resident of North Haven. I attended Clintonville Elementary School, the former North Haven Junior High School, and North Haven High School, graduating in 1995. I married my wife, Fran, in February 2003, and we have a son, John Sebastian, who was a third grader at Clintonville Elementary School. I am a 20-year town employee, currently working as the program coordinator for the Community Services and Recreation Department. My wife, Fran, and I are both small business owners in town. Since 2009, Fran has owned and operated Fran's Learning Center, a state-licensed daycare from our home, and since 2007, I have owned and operated Double J Sound, oh, this jockey business. Throughout the years, I have volunteered for many organizations in town, such as North Haven Youth Football, North Haven Youth Basketball, Max Sinaway Baseball, and North Haven Special Olympics. However, I am concerned at the current state of North Haven. Residents of all ages are struggling to maintain their homes. That is why over the last 18 months, I have contemplated running for first selectman. Seniors that are on a fixed income are struggling to pay their bills. And with taxes increasing, they are struggling, they, they will be losing their home soon. Professionally and personally, I am in touch with the Pulse of North Haven. From my volunteer work to assisting seniors with heating their homes, I believe I have the insight as to what the residents of North Haven need. Thank you.
Okay, thank you to the both of you, and very timely, by the way. Excellent, good start. Um, we're going to start with our questions, and we did do a coin toss. I will say that they were both uh, very willing to let the other do whatever the other wants, but it ended up that uh, for Selectman Frieda goes first. So with that, the first question of the day. Um, having been in office for three terms and having many successes, what would you classify as your biggest accomplishment? And if re-elected, what other uh, opportunities of that accomplishment would you bring forward? I think um, some of the accomplishments would include the AAA rated status, uh, instituting a high level of customer service to the residents of North Haven. Every day we get 100, 200 phone calls a day, another 100 emails, and I always believe that it's how you handle the residents' individual problem that separates us from perhaps other communities. So that's one of our accomplishments. I think in terms of communication with the residents, communicating with them, uh, getting on TV, telling them what's happening in the town, putting together an overview at every board of selectmen meeting in terms of what's happening in the town, a month review from an operational standpoint, a strategic standpoint, from a customer service standpoint, and from some of the things that we're pushing forward with initiatives. Uh, most recently, last night, we had a town meeting. We're moving forward with several key initiatives. Senior tax relief program, a veterans monument for post-Vietnam veterans for all the campaigns that serve. We're looking to put another monument on the green. We're looking to protect the residents by instituting a more robust and vibrant blasting ordinance. And as I look forward, Chris, I think there's still challenges. And I love challenges, ladies and gentlemen. I thrive on addressing challenges. We have challenges in terms of the Pratt Whitney site. And as we move forward, continued growth of the grand list is going to be very, very important for the town of North Haven. Those are some of the things I'll be looking at. Senior tax freeze, uh, senior tax freeze is one of the big initiatives, along with some of the other quality of life issues in North Haven. Thank you. OK. Mr. Pavanti, your turn. Um, as far as I'm aware, you've not held office in the past, but you, obviously you've put, participated in the private and a little bit so much in the uh, public sector. Um, what would you say your qualifications are in uh, becoming first selectman, and what, what are your, some of your most um, well-recognized accomplishments? Okay. Um, my goal as uh, first selectman would to be um, generate more business, bring more businesses to North Haven. Businesses um, on Washington Avenue, there's a lot of empty buildings. Um, I believe that I can bring those businesses to North Haven. I believe um, being a small business owner, having a son, raised, I've raised in North Haven. Um, I'm a lifelong resident and working with the seniors through my job and young families at my job in the recreation department in addition to the youth organizations. Um, I believe I, I have an understanding as to what the families need in North Haven. Um, okay, thank you. Um, number two, back, back to First Selectman Frieda. Uh, what, are, what are your biggest concerns about the town budget at this point? My concerns about the town budget uh, would be based on the fact that what we watch very closely is the or organic growth of the town budget, and that is the wages increases and the health care increases and the potential of the state not funding us the way we anticipate them being funded. And when we look at all those issues, we have to really focus in on grand list growth to offset those concerns. Now, we look at businesses here in North Haven. Uh, we have put together a tax abatement program, which I think will, ver will help us fill some of the uh, vacant spots, the 168 acres at Pratt Whitney. But when we look at our budget, we have almost 500 line items, Chris, in our budget. Every one we scrutinize. And every year, we've balanced our budget in North Haven. Three out of the last six years, we've delivered a surplus, a modest surplus that is put back in the general fund. Our fund balance is at 8.3%, which cons is considered very high. So coming back to your question on the budget, it's micromanaging line by line items and balancing the budget. And I'm proud of the fact that for six consecutive years, we have balanced that budget. Thank you. Would you like me to repeat the question? Please. Okay. So what are your concerns in respect to the town budget? 
My concerns are, um, first, are the seniors. Um, with the taxes that have increased over the last few years, they are, like I stated earlier, they're struggling to maintain their homes. Um, spending over budget on attorney fees uh, in the year, fiscal year 14-15, was uh, $84,000 over budget. And certain things can be looked at, in my opinion. For example, is it necessary, I mean, I know North Haven loves their leaf pickup, but is it necessary to have leaf pickup on Saturdays and Sundays, to have an, uh, to pay three supervisors overtime and the public works department overtime? That's just one small idea that I believe can be looked at. Um, just the spending um, is, I believe, is out of control. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Um, again, Selectman Farida. What do you believe is the greatest threat to economic growth in North Haven? I think the greatest threat to economic growth is the image that Connecticut is not business friendly. And image tends to manifest itself into reality. So what are we doing about it in North Haven? Well, I recently been appointed to the board of directors of Connecticut Conference of Municipalities. And we had a press conference in Hartford this past week at the Capitol. Myself and four other chief elected officials across the state who are part of this task force and steering committee. And what we're doing is organizing a business summit, small businesses, medium businesses, and large businesses at Water's Edge in Westbrook on November 13th. We've invited AFL-CIO and CBIA, two of the leading institutions uh, in Connecticut, to come together, labor and business, to discuss the issues. We'll have key legislators there from across the state of Connecticut, state senators and state representatives, and I'm leading the charge on this to, for the first time, create this Economic Development Summit. Secondarily, Chris, we have an outstanding relationship with DECD. Catherine Smith, the commissioner, Tony Resigno and I have worked with her on many occasions as we support the chamber here in town. And we always bring the DECD in to any major business discussions that we have. Because it's my opinion that the perception of the fact that Connecticut has no programs is not necessarily the case. Every time we bring in DECD, myself and Richard Lopresti, chairman of our Economic Development Commission, we always are able to present programs to potential businesses in North Haven. So we're taking an offensive leadership approach and the CBIA AFL-CIO summit with myself as part of the steering committee, as part of CCM with five other chief elected officials across the state is going to be a major event in Connecticut on November 13th. Thank you so much. Again, Mr. Bamonte, what, what do you believe is the greatest threat to North Haven and what would you do to avert it or help it? Um, the greatest threat I believe in North Haven is um, the small businesses leaving so quickly. I think the business, the small business owners that are struggling to stay open um, are overpowered by the, the large businesses, the, the franchises. Um, the small businesses are struggling um, to maintain their businesses. And as first selectman, I would implement a uh, re, in, re, re bring in the small business showcases that um, former first selectman Kevin Kopetz had done in the past which I believe would be a great idea to bring back so the small businesses can demonstrate and advertise their small businesses. Thank you. Um, other than what's been mentioned uh, so far this morning, would you kind of uh, focus on one specific project or, or discussion you're having in which you believe you want to take forward even more so than you have? Yes, actually, Chris, I can probably talk about 27 no doubt. projects that we're involved with right now. But I will, I'll talk about a great opportunity and then a great challenge, and I'll try to do that quickly to allow Mr. Romani also to comment. Um, the major project we're working on is Universal Drive with Dick Sporting Goods. Grand opening will be um, this week, and that was a project we've spent a considerable amount of time on. There was an example of a major retailer coming in that has regenerated the whole plaza. The grant, the grant list will grow, the property values will be higher because of the renovation of that plaza. 
the Cinemark Theater is a major project, and the four pads in the front with the four businesses, hopefully two restaurants, one we already have coming, one more, and two retailers, will really create incremental grand list growth as a result of that major project. I can talk about mo more opportunities. Clintonville Manor, we're bringing in Maplewood for a brand new senior assisted living facility. Approximately $300,000 in incremental taxes for the town once Clintonville Manor is, is going to be leveled. The major project we're working on that we have recently failed again is on the Pratt Whitney site. We had the Niagara Bottling Company that was going to come into that site. We had the UI, the water company, myself. We had representatives, the ownership there, and we couldn't quite put that together. That still represents, Chris, I think the greatest challenge for North Haven, but one that I can guarantee we're going to get done. That we can guarantee. Thank you. Again, um, other than what's been mentioned already, at least by yourself, um, what do you believe is the, um, the shining light in your portfolio, if you will, and what will you do to bring it forward? Um, my goal was to bring Northern Washington Avenue some more businesses, whether it be more restaurants, exclusive restaurants, <coughs> a clothing store. Um, I believe Northern Washington Avenue, when you drive down that road, is is an, is an eyesore to, to drive through. Um, you know, growing up in North Haven, Washington Avenue used to be the place to be. Washington, the the plaza, the old sidewalk sales, bringing North Haven back, bringing those small businesses to that area will rejuvenate North Haven um, in the future. Thank you. Okay. Um, which may be a typical question, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. Um, what distinguishes you from your opponent as far as leading the town? Well, I would talk about myself in terms of, to answer your question, I think uh, one of the distinguishing factors would probably be that um, I was president and chief executive officer of my companies. Uh, from 1994 to 2008, I was not only the president and CEO of my organizations, I was in mergers and acquisitions. I put together regional and national LLCs. I sat on corporate advisory boards for some of the largest consumer product companies in the world. Nestle, Tropicana, Gatorade, Unilever, uh, those are just to name a few. Uh, I put together regional LLCs and national LLCs. I was very focused on strategic management. I had top-to-top -to -top relationships with some of the largest customers in the United States at the retail level, and I managed the corporation's banking relationships and legal relationships with our corporate attorneys. So the point of that, Chris, is that once I stepped into town hall six years ago, I can say that there was absolutely nothing, not one thing that I was presented with or confronted with that I didn't have a great deal of experience dealing with from my past life. And even today, six years now into this position, uh, we've taken that a step further with the relationships we have with the water company, the UI company, the state, state senators, state representatives, uh, the capital, CBIA, now hopefully with AFL-CIO. The manifestation of those relationships has, I think, delivered a lot of success for North Haven. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, and what do you think, Mr. Vermonti, distinguishes you from the present leadership and where you'll make a difference? Um, except that Mike's a Yankee fan and I'm a Met fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the difference between Mike and I, um, uh, I feel that working full time, working two jobs, knowing the struggle, knowing what it takes to struggle, pay your bills, work two jobs, have a wife that works full time, um, full days, and the struggle that we have, I, I understand what the people of North Haven are going through. Um, and I just hope that I can assist them to <clears throat> maintain their homes in North Haven. And um, that's it. Okay, thank you. Well, as in the program, we have five questions. That is five questions. And what is un 
or non-typical, I would say, I'm not sure if I just made up a word, uh, is that we finished early with the questions. So to your credit, thank you so much for being under, under time. Um, I think um, I'm going to go out on a limb, and I guess I'll ask a question myself. How's, how's that? Uh, and that is, um, in, I believe it was the Sunday Register that was mentioned about there's a tiff, evidently, between uh, uh, Quinnipiac University and Hamden. And um, actually, good things were said about the relationship between Quinnipiac and North Haven. So with that, um, what's your thought about your, the interactions with uh, Quinnipiac? It reminds me of managing relationships in my business career with some of the largest clients that we had in my company. And sometimes those relationships, by improperly managing them, can really backfire on a corporation or, in this case, a municipality. I've chosen to develop outstanding relationships with Quinnipiac University. I believe that the best way to manage complicated relationships is to be on the inside, having discussions with the top management of the institution. I recognize two things about this relationship. Number one, they can and have been and will continue to be an economic development driver for us on Northern Washington Avenue. In fact, the project I mentioned earlier with Munson Motors being torn down with a 50,000 square foot retail plaza with restaurants going in there is a result of the fact that Quinnipiac has a medical school and law school across the way. However, equally important and, and perhaps even more important is managing the relationship so that there's no intrusion into the residential neighborhoods. Now keep this in mind, ladies and gentlemen. I happen to live in the area where Quinnipiac University has bought up a lot of property. I have a vested interest in protecting the town of North Haven and uh, my western part of town from anything that even remotely resembles what's happened in Hamden. But I have the assurances of Dr. Leahy and there's top management that they will work with me so that the relationship will continue to grow to deliver positive results for North Haven. And they know, because I've stated it very clearly, that I cannot afford to have any disruption in the neighborhoods. So if we look at perhaps one of our surrounding towns, I can tell you that if the, re if the outcome is bad, it's a direct result of a relationship that really is no relationship. That's what happens. When you don't have the relationships, things tend to go awry. Mr. Bermonti, since that was somewhat ad-libbed, I'll do the best job I can to repeat that, um, uh, barring the TIFF. Um, so it appears that uh, Quinnipiac University is uh, very pleased with North Haven and they're leaning in, in North Haven's direction. Um, on either side of the fence, as far as pro or con, what's your thoughts about Quinnipiac and what would you do to, in dealing with them? My only concern is the problem that Hamden had with the partying of the students, um, which became um, uncontrollable at some points. Um, I do like the idea of trusting the students to North Haven businesses to, um, to shop. I believe that they should be utilizing our resources on, North, on Washington Avenue and Universal Drive. Um, I do believe that I, I am just concerned regarding the buildings and the properties that they're buying and that may cause a problem for residents um, in the future selling their homes or um, moving out due to the fact that there is um, a lot of partying in those residences. Thank you. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll continue. <laughs> um, being that I, I assume there are uh, monies available from Hartford, okay, that you interact in Hartford, um, how would you sum up your relationship with Hartford and where are there, is there room for improvement? I think the relationship with Hartford is outstanding. And we have uh, two great 
state legislators here that have been personal friends of mine for 30 years, even before, long before we ended up in our current careers. Dave Yacarino, our state representative, and Len Fisano, uh, the state senate minority leader. But I prided myself, Chris, on working across the, the aisle. I pride myself on working across party line. And you know, we have uh, regular conversations when I'm up in Hartford with Speaker of the House Sharkey, Senator Martin Looney, who I know from Notre Dame High School, and uh, also uh, Governor Malloy has been in town on several occasions uh, because we've been the recipient of almost $4 million worth of steep grants in the last few years. Steep grants is, uh, are grants that we get for infrastructure improvement projects. We renovated Town Hall with uh, making it ADA compliant, parks, playscapes. One of my initiatives is to improve ball fields across the town. So the relationship with Hartford uh, is outstanding and will continue. I'm up there at least once a month. I also am chairman of the state task force on animal welfare. Uh, we're looking to do things to improve animal welfare across the state. And my role with uh, both, both cost, the Council of Small Towns, and Connecticut Conference of Municipalities keeps me in the mix of uh, legislative activities. And the reason I do that, Chris, is because it's very important for North Haven to be inside the discussions with the state legislators, having good relationships, because we've seen the benefits in the form of grants that the town has received and other things that have happened that are good outcomes. Thank you. So with that, if you're elected as first selectman, where do you see your relationship with Hartford, and do you see where maybe improvements can be made or not? Yes. Um, I also have a close relationship with State Representative Dave Iaccarino. I've known him for a little over 20 years, and State Senator Len Fisano. Um, my focus uh, would be getting funding for our parks. Um, Grover Wyman Park is in need of um, refurbishing. It needs to be completely re torn down and, and rebuilt. State funding um, would offset the cost of the residents of North Haven to pay for that. Uh, and also school security. I believe school security um, needs to be addressed a little better. Um, whether it's providing security, a security officer at each elementary school and middle school um, to prevent um, another tragedy from happening that's been happening too often. Thank you so much. So with that, I think I'm going to abide by... Yes, Tony? Are we going to end this or are we going to ask a question? No, yep, yep, get going there. Okay. Okay, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. So with that, I was going, I am going to abide by my own rule and not have a personal conversation. <laughs> kind of thing. That's not always the easiest rule, is it? <laughs> Um, with that, we have uh, time to have the folks out in the audience ask questions. Again, it is not meant to be uh, a, de a personal debate between you. It's meant to be open and friendly. And I want to point out something that I noticed. I noticed one of, one, one of my questions was about your opponent, and neither of you attacked each other. I think that's a class act on both parts, by the way. So thank you for that. Okay. With that, does anybody have any questions? Yes, and ma'am, if you would just step up to the mic and ask away. Hello, gentlemen. So um, there's a balance that has to be struck financially in the school districts, and that includes your suggestion of parks and renovations. How do you square that? How do you do that when we have such a restrictive budget? Thank you. Um, John, we'll, we'll both answer. John will answer first, and I'll Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, I strongly believe the state grants, <laughs> the funding from the state, there, there's monies there that will offset that cost. And um, so if we look at the state grants, you know, we have renovated playscapes at Monterey School, Clintonville School. Uh, John mentioned Grover Wyman Park, where we have plans in the spring to renovate the concession stand. Uh, we also have LOSIP that we use to apply towards these different grants. I mentioned $4 million worth of grants that we have received. LOSIP, I should say, is, is applied to capital improvement. So the balance is such that right now about 54% of North Haven's budget is dedicated to education. 46 on the town side. When we add in the debt on the middle school and the high school from the past, 
about 60% of the town's debt is, or budget, is for the Board of Ed, 40% for the town. Every year, the organic growth is about 2.5% with wages. We've been very uh, diligent at managing health care costs, so our health care costs actually went down 3% last year. We led the region in terms of the lowest health care increases was a decrease. So managing the line by lines, looking at Hartford to help us with steep grants, about 7% of our overall revenue is generated by um, Hartford without the steep grants. And then the growth of the grant list. These economic development projects, when they deliver incremental top line revenue, that can help support budget growth to put back into the system, whether it be education or the town, uh, programs, curriculum for education, or services for the town. And by the way, our services, um, I, I hear this from our other chief elected officials around the state, nobody does what we do. Nobody, in terms of leaf collection and some of the things that we're doing. Thank you. Anybody else questions? I want to uh, sort of follow up on the education piece. You know, uh, my experience when I was first selected was there was uh, a huge tug of war, frankly, that took place between education uh, and some of the other factions in the community, and particularly uh, the seniors. Uh, you know, whether it was spending more for education and more uh, trying to keep taxes in check. I don't get the sense, based on what I read in the paper, uh, that that is a huge issue anymore. And it's, I don't know how you accomplish that, because uh, it, we, it took us in two, two consecutive years, five years each time, to get a budget passed, because there was, uh, you know, points on either side that were very valid. And, you know, we eventually through it, but there doesn't seem to be that angst anymore, and I'm curious about that. Well, if you don't mind, I'll take that, John, since I'm uh, the one involved right now. Uh, I think Ty makes a very good point, and a lot of that stems back to what we just talked about, about relationships. So Dr. Cronin and I have developed an outstanding relationship in the four plus years that he's been the superintendent. Dr. Cronin and I and Christine Carling, the director of finance and business management there, meet on a regular basis. We, we, I've actually met with the teachers unions on many, many occasions. I've asked questions, where do we need help on curriculum? As far as the, uh, the previous controversies or tension that existed maybe in the past, we've also had many conversations with seniors. I go to the Senior Citizen Center. And the fact that our middle school passed by a 75% vote on a referendum kind of supports what uh, Tony Resigno was just saying. There, there's not that much tension anymore. But I do agree that the seniors are struggling, and that's why we're introducing this tax freeze program. So coming back to why relationships with the superintendent and the Board of Education, communication, understanding each other's needs. As an example, if I get a request for a 10% increase on the Board of Ed side, I know I can't do that. I know the residents of North Haven aren't going to accept that. We give the increases that are a byproduct of the Board of Ed and the superintendent saying to me, Mike, this is what we see we need. And then we explain it to the rest of the public through our public hearings and public sessions. Would you like to pick up on that at all? Or? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, let me be a reminder. I think there's a couple more questions that we have a microphone over there that if you would kindly ask your question through the microphone so that way um, you, can be, you can be heard. Anything? Christine? Good morning, uh, Christine Mansfield, Discovery Training Services. Um, you both have budgetary experiences on, on either corporate or uh, personal sides. What are the components that you'll face um, as first selectmen in budget planning through all of your careful planning and partnerships, of course, is the state. Unfunded mandates represent a liability that every taxpayer has to face, and you will face in that current role as CEO. Which mandate, whether you look at education, whether you look at energy, whether you look at DEEP, and phosphorus and regulation control, which one keeps you awake at night? Um, if you could look either in the past in this recent budget that just came through in July, or if you want to look forward and see some of the risks that are coming forward, which particular unfunded mandate would you worry most about as a liability for unplanned expenditures coming up in the next year or two? 
Would you like me to take that one, John? Go first. One. Okay. Uh, that's an excellent question, Christine. Um, unfunded mandates are a thorn in the side of many of us chief elected officials. But when I look at the unfunded mandates, uh, the MS for stormwater mandate, we were able to reconcile that through continued negotiations with DEEP in Hartford. And I was part of that with Connecticut Conference of Municipalities and the Council of Small Towns. So as MS for stormwater relates to North Haven, we're not going to be affected by that. Um, unfunded mandates regarding uh, special education, uh, I look at special education as critically important in North Haven. So that's not an unfunded mandate that I spend a lot of time thinking about because we need to do it, we have to do it, and knowing parents who have autistic children and children with uh, social or, uh, or intellectual disabilities, that's something that although it's not totally reimbursed, we're going to continue to do it in North Haven. Uh, the issue that uh, really is surprisingly very poignant across the state is the issue of uh, advertising in newspapers versus utilizing websites. I never gave this much thought, but in my discussions with other chief elected officials, um, that's something that uh, the, they're trying to stop at the state level. In other words, just have the towns advertise, whether it be competitive bids or any advertisements for anything, just through the website because of the cost of doing that. So unfunded mandates are a problem. But when we look at North Haven, unlike, let's say, New Haven, where approximately 40 to 43 percent of their overall revenue is a derivative of state funding, I go back to what I mentioned earlier, that North Haven has only 7 percent of its revenue from the state. And quite frankly, I, I like it that way because I'm on the hot seat with our people to deliver a pristine budget performance every year and not be reliant on a significant amount of income coming from the state. We manage unfunded mandates within the budget, and despite the unfunded mandates, we're still balancing budgets every year. Would you like to add to that at all? Okay. Anybody else? Okay, well, I'd like to ask one more question then, if I, if I may, um, because I think they're unrepresented here to a degree. And that is, and I'm going to touch on both sides, um, the state has an issue with people leaving at different points. For the longest time, it's been folks, when they retire, okay, the, they move to Florida to not pay income tax, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe it's a little cheaper to live. Okay, what I think is a more recent trend is on the other end, quite frankly, with younger people leaving too, okay? I have a 24-year-old, two children, a uh, 24-year-old and a 21-year-old, and both would move without hesitation. Um, so with that, I think that's more of a state issue, but it certainly trickles down, okay? Is there anything that you, either of you, and I'd like an answer from both if I can, uh, I think you can do on a more local level to kind of stay that a little bit? John, would you like to go first on that? Okay. Um, uh, then I'll go first, okay? <laughs> um, you're absolutely right. We have what we call leakage in two demographics. 55 and over are leaving the state. Uh, because of uh, high taxation uh, at the state level, you know, it's the sales tax, whatever it may be. But also we're getting a leakage from the younger demographics. So what are we doing about that? Chris? What have we done in North Haven? Well, I have tried to uh, and have participated in many forums, and I've actually been a panel discussion moderator uh, for a, uh, a real estate consortium. We hosted this at, in <coughs> Southington, and we brought in a group of young professionals. and. In that group of young professionals, 25 to 32, they told us why they're leaving Connecticut. They don't want to drive. They want access. They want walking access. They want train stations. They want accessibility into areas that have the arts and the theater, but they don't want to drive there. They don't like the fact that in some of the cities they live in, the rent structures are very high because many of them are renting. And uh, transportation is a huge issue for them. They don't like driving on highways with congestion. So that was one, one demographic. Mayor Jackson and I hosted a forum with uh, public radio over in Hamden about a year ago with the college students. And we had uh, 200 college students that we interviewed. Myself, Mayor Jackson, uh, public radio, and we heard a lot. And what we heard was things like 
Connecticut's too cold. They don't want to drive, similar to the other demographic. They want to go south. They want to go into other areas where they think it's uh, a quieter <coughs> form of life. They don't believe Connecticut has the jobs that they need for the future. They see themselves stymied by what they hear at the state level, the gloom and doom at the state level. They have been projected in image, these college students, that they have no hope for the future for them from a career standpoint. And that, within that demographic, Chris, is what's driving that group out in terms of leading. Thank you. Mr. Belanti? Well, you, you drive around North Haven and you do see many, many houses for sale. And that is not strictly a North Haven issue. Like Chris said and Mike said, it is a state issue. Um, I believe um, bringing in more businesses will create more jobs. <coughs> so they're, they are, the college students who are graduating college are not leaving, going to a different state to work where there's more job growth. So with more jobs, with more businesses, with more jobs, that will create um, more opportunities for the quote unquote younger generation to um, not uh, move their residences to another state in the future. Thank you very much. Well, with that, I see that we're running well ahead of schedule. I know my employees would appreciate it if I did that more. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so with that, um, does anybody else have any more questions? OK, I don't see a reason to keep you here. Listen. Oh, we do? OK, Thank Brittany, you you're up. You bet. Don't, don't forget about the money, yes, please. Yes, I know. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, my name is Brittany Nizachi from IFS Web Solutions, and I thank you very much for bringing that question up, Chris. Um, as part of the younger generation, um, and a recent college graduate, we have amazing schools here in Connecticut, amazing colleges, especially Quinnipiac, locally here, right here. And the biggest thing I'd like to be curious about is with the amount of student loan debt for this education, and the lack of opportunity in jobs, and for young entrepreneurs to start new businesses here, what in what plans do you both want to take to balance that out? So, meaning, what do you guys think that you will encourage and focus more on for the younger generations to keep them here and encourage more job growth here? Because again, this kind of balance of the older generation leaving as well as the younger, I think something needs to be focused on for both. So I ask you both um, more directly, where would you guys focus to help encourage more young entrepreneurs to stay here in Connecticut? Thank you. Um, thank you. Like I said earlier, I would um, reintroduce the, the showcases, the business showcases, to help the business businesses advertise and demonstrate their businesses. Um, I've opened my business. I've had my business since 2007, and I didn't know where to start. I didn't know what to do, but I did it and uh, I am succeeding. Um, however, um, some businesses need that push to get started, and um, those showcases would help them do that. It's an outstanding question, and it has multiple answers. I'll try to keep the answers very um, focused. Based on what I heard at the panel discussion, with the young group of professionals from 25 to 32. And based upon what I heard when Mayor Scott Jackson and I interviewed a couple of hundred college students, um, we see the need to continue to work with the youth, whether they be undergraduates, postgraduates, and determine exactly where their majors are, where their career growth is, what their interests are, and try to match those interests up with where we are from a municipality on curriculum and how we're helping train students for the future. Now, I, I can tell you that I've also taken a very micro approach because the macro approach, in my opinion, is a long process to try to solve. I have spent a great deal of time mentoring high school students, college students, and students that have graduated. In my office, on, on a month, on a given month, there are at least five or six people that I meet with 
whether they be high school students, undergraduates, or postgraduates. I listen to them very carefully. In my corporate business career, I actually counseled a lot of young executives on career growth. And I take that very seriously in terms of trying to perpetuate opportunities for young people. And inevitably, when I have these micro meetings, the one-on-one -on -one meetings, I end up determining a course of action for that young person. And most recently, I had someone in my office, and I concluded that he would be best suited in the insurance industry. He had never thought of it. He's currently now looking for opportunities in the insurance industry, and uh, he sees that as a career growth for him. And I'm going to help him with that. When you have the relationship at the municipal level, we pride ourselves on opening doors for people to help get people interviews and to see if they can help sell themselves. So it's a macro approach, listening to multiple demographics within the youth, but also the micro approach. We must, as chief elected officials, understand that as leaders of our communities, we, we must spend time with people who reach out for us and mentor. And I love doing that. I love trying to help the youth. It's not a total solution, but it's a start to help address this growing problem. <coughs> Thank you so much. Well, anybody else? Marion, remember the mic. Because she can stand where you are, right? Sure, sure she can. Um, the only thing is, I don't think she'll, she, she won't be heard on the table. Oh. oh. <laughs> Unrehearsed. <laughs> Miriam Brody, North Haven. Um, more as a comment, or perhaps you might be able to answer it. Among a number of my own friends who have moved to uh, the warmer climes of Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, I have found that recently, when they have medical problems or dental problems or anything in that area, they come back to Connecticut for treatment because they say we have the best here. And uh, it isn't, I've heard this in a number of cases, and I know particularly in Florida, I have friends that go there and they say uh, the doctors there are concentrating on uh, massages and facials, and but for the real problems, they come back to Connecticut. And I'd like your comment on that. Either. Well, I think it was Thomas Wolfe, Miriam, that said, there's no place like home or it's good to be home. And sometimes we do see a gravitation back to home roots. Um, my son's a good example. He ended up working in New York right out of college a couple of years ago, spent two years in New York City, and uh, that was the destination he wanted to go to, but ended up coming back to North Haven. We've seen seniors come back to North Haven because of family issues. Uh, that may be a birth of a grandchild. They want to spend more time with uh, their families. So there's no real direct answer as to why this happens, but all of us in our lives tend to move forward, go places and do things, and have great experiences. I've traveled all over the country in my corporate business career, but yet I love Connecticut. I love North Haven. And I always, while I was away, couldn't wait to get back. And some of us, we have the sentimentality where we grew up in a certain location, we may grow professionally, we may do things and expand, but some of us, when we get older, may just want to come back to our home roots. And that may explain what Miriam is saying. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, being a resident of North Haven, my entire life. Um, I don't know if I would want to leave and come back, but uh, um, I believe North, uh, Connecticut has the greatest hospitals, the best medical care in the country. Um, with Yale, their cancer center, um, they are by far one of the greatest. Um, and as Mike said, you know, 
people leave and then North Haven is still their home. You know, they may be a resident of San Francisco, California, but they are still a North Haven, North Havener. Thank you very much. And I think it was Dorothy also that said, yes. there's no place like home. <laughs> 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 um, yes, ma'am. Yes, I have a question. Okay. Hi, Allie, Edible Arrangements of North Haven, also a long time um, resident of North Haven. I love that we're de developing a relationship with Quinnipiac University. I'm a big believer in that. Uh, but I also understand one of the issues that Quinnipiac University had with the town of Hamden was um, the dorms. So I understand that they're trying to grow as well, Quinnipiac University, and there's not enough dorms for them. Do we have different properties? in North Haven where we're looking at putting up dorms. I understand they bought, like, I understand about two years ago, Quinnipiac University bought the property on Cannonbury, which, you know, that's a big area where I live as well too. So I just wanted to know, are they planning on putting dorms up there or where are we looking to put dorms in okay. North Haven? Would you like me to take that one, Johnson? Sorry. <laughs> uh, I can't it's answer that you. question. Okay. <laughs> all right, that's a very good question, Allie. And uh, uh, I live, of course, as I mentioned earlier, in that same part of town. So. Uh, as far as dormitories, no. There's no plans for Quinnipiac to put dormitories up because I am trying to create apartment opportunities on Northern Washington Avenue for two reasons. Number one, when we bring in private development alley to put apartments up, like the one on where Daddy O Farms used mm -hmm. to be, the town derives the tax revenue for that. Our planning and zoning is authorized a number of apartments both on the east side and west side. The number is roughly a total of 400, roughly. So it's our goal to centralize these apartments on Northern Washington Avenue to keep the students out of the neighborhoods, which addresses the eastern part of town. As far as the western part of town, there can be no dormitories ever put there because it's an R40 zone, and our zoning requirements and restrictions are very, very tight. We will never break those zoning laws to put dormitories in a residential section. Now the area that Allie's talking about is a group, is a, uh, a parcel of hundreds of, of uh, multiple acres, somewhat shy of a hundred, that they've purchased on the western side of town. Right now there's no plan on what they're going to do. And this is another good example of us being on the inside with the discussions to determine that. Now in an R40 zone, the only thing they can do is put housing there regular residential homes. It could be in the future that the, uh, if we look at Canterbury Way or Upper State Street and Kings Highway, uh, that 24 acres there, Alley, there could be potentially faculty housing there where young families live there with professors. If in the event, and there's no indication of this, that they build houses there, which they have no intention of doing, but hypothetically, and hypothetically, if students were to go there, then our zoning laws kick in with no more than three students per house. But there's absolutely no indication of any of that happening, and I can assure you there will be no dormitories in the western part of town. Thank you. Okay, Ali. Very good. Any other questions? Okay. So with that, I'd like to thank the candidates for joining us today. I think you... Uh, there you go. I'd like to thank all of you for being here because without you, we wouldn't have had some of the questions. Um, and also, I'd like to um, add to that because I had heard that the, uh, we, well, let's go with this. I know the voter turnout is very low, right? So you here obviously are more interested in politics and what goes on and all of that. Would you kindly mention? Your, your thoughts and all of that and see if you can maybe get a couple more people to come out and vote. Mm -hmm. I think that'd probably be a, a net positive, okay? Um, and I don't care about your affiliation. It doesn't matter to me. Get out and vote is the bottom line. Um, with that, I would like to thank everybody again for coming here. I'd like to thank our TV audience for being here as well and kudos to you for uh, being able to put this time aside for you to watch this as well. So thank you very much at home. With that, we're adjourned. So I've last on this one. Okay, so we're back. Hopefully there was no commercial. Uh, um, um, we do have time for closing um, statements, so we're going to do so. I believe everybody had or both have two is it two minutes or two and a half? Two minutes. Two minutes each. 
So with that, whomever opted to go first, please do so. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for attending today. Um, the town of North Haven needs a leader, a leader that understands the needs of North Haven, a leader that can make decisions under pressure. The late great NFL Hall of Famer Reggie White once said, God places the heaviest burden on those who can carry its weight. Adversity is nothing new for me. From being diagnosed and treated for stage two Hodgkin's lymphoma in 2010 and 2011, to losing a child that was four months short of birth in 2012. With my years experience involved in several youth organizations, I have the inner strength and passion to be a great leader that North Haven needs. And I ask that everyone votes. Please vote on November 3rd, and I hope you vote row A. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank Albrook Steel for hosting this wonderful event, the Great New Haven Chamber of Commerce. Love working with the chamber, Tony and Dee and their staff. And it seems hard to believe that six years have almost gone by. But I want everyone to know that I remain fully motivated to continue to deliver success to North Haven. What you may not know about me is that, although earlier we talked about what I did before I took office, you may not know that I absolutely know what it's like to struggle also. My father passed away when I was 21. I looked around that table. I had a 17-year-old brother and a 47-year-old mother. They were devastated. It was at that particular moment in time that I realized that I was the man of the family. And it then hit me that I ended up working two jobs, three jobs. After I graduated from college, I started in my business career at the entry-level position. Over 18 years, through the sheer force of will, competitive will, never giving up, never stopping, setting goals and objectives, a relentless and implacable approach to deliver success, I became president chief executive officer of my companies. So in my first campaign in 2009, I knocked on thousands of doors across North Haven. No matter who it was, whether it was a CEO of a company or someone struggling, I was able to relate to each and every person because in some odd way, I had been where they were. So the notion of moving forward positively, I truly believe we can accomplish anything here in North Haven. I look at hurdles as opportunities. We are never going to give up here in North Haven. The things we do, outreach in terms of other agencies, and the things we do to deliver positive outcomes for North Haven will continue. As we move forward, I can guarantee you, North Haven will continue to be among the leading municipalities in the state for what we do. Through the sheer force of passion, will, and never giving up, a relentless and implacable approach to perfection. And I realize perfection is not something that can be achieved easily. But in the pursuit of perfection, for all of us, we may just achieve a great deal of success. It's been a great delight to work with everyone in this room over the past six years. And I hope to continue. I thank you for hosting this. And I look forward to continued success here in North Haven. Thank you very much. Okay, I think now it's safe to say, meeting adjourned. Okay. The preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the town of North Haven. Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at nhtv.com. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube.